Thanks for stopping by for another video. If this video is of any help and you want to support the channel, please take a quick moment to subscribe and drop a comment and a like. In this video, we're going to go ahead and tie up the not only trout mini mover, it's a carp and bass and trout fly. In the vise, we have a Moonlit Tagata ML801 hook in size 8. And we're going to go ahead by starting off by throwing down a very small thread base and cutting off our tag end. And we're going to go ahead and tie in some large silver bead chain eyes just a little bit behind the eye of the hook. So we'll do some crossing wraps on both directions to get this locked into place and then do some wraps over the hook, under the bead chain, over the hook, under the bead chain, wrap around the top of the bead chain. Just get it really tightly uh, seated in. And then I'll throw a couple wraps behind the bead chain eyes and throw in a quip whip finish. That's just to add a little bit of extra durability to the fly. From here, we'll take our thread and wrap back towards the curve of the hook. And we're going to go ahead and uh, make a small dubbing noodle. And we're going to use some Disco Dub from Nature Spirit. It's in rusty brown color. And we're going to pinch that on there. And the purpose of this dubbing ball is to give a little bit of flash at the back of the fly and to help our legs at the back, our pictures at the back, uh, stay splayed open a little bit more. So we'll make a dubbing ball right at the curve of the hook. And then we'll go ahead and measure out some pine squirrel. We're going to take our pine squirrel zonker. This is in rusty brown. It's 1 16th inch uh, thick zonker strips. We're going to go ahead and measure out our zonker strip to go from the eye of the hook to the curve and snip that so that we can have it splay out the length that we want. And then we'll go ahead and take a second longer to cut up a second one. And then we will get them tied in right behind, or right in front of the dubbing ball. So I'll we'll have the fibers on the zonker heading towards the back of the hook. And we'll just take a small tag end of our strip And we will tie that in right in front of that dubbing ball. And try not to trap too many fibers. If you trap some, that's okay. And we'll tie in our other zonker strip facing towards the back. Same style. Just right in front of that dubbing ball. Lock it down nice and tight. You can see there's not a lot of splay going on right now, so what we're going to do is we're going to go through and do a couple of thread wraps in between the dubbing ball and the zonker strip and pull that zonker forward. And we'll do that on the other side as well. And I'll just repeat that process. It's not going to cause them to stick out on a 90 degree angle permanently but it does give them a little bit more wiggle and a little bit more splay. Now we'll go ahead and clear up our body of the fly real quick. And we're back. Now we're going to go ahead and create a loop so that we can spin some pine squirrel fur and create the body of the not only trout mini mover. So we'll go ahead, capture our thread, make that nice and tight, and advance our thread to right behind the eye of the hook, get it out of the way, and then pull our thread down. If you have a thread or a bobbin cradle that you can use, feel free to use that here. I don't have that attached on the vise right now. So now I'll go ahead and put in a chunk of pine squirrel in between the two pieces of thread, Lay that in there without losing too much. Pretty proud of myself there. And then spin that up nice and tight so that we can uh, have the body of this fly be durable. We want this to last as many fish as we can. So we'll go ahead, spin up our fur here, create a nice tight 
spin. And you can see that I got a few pieces of the fur from the back end of the zonk strip, so I grab my bodkin and pull that out now. And spin that up nice and tight, and then we're gonna go ahead and pull our work our thread back to our tie-in point. And we're just gonna preen the fibers back and then wrap forward trying to trap as few of these fibers as possible. Sometimes it takes a little bit of coaxing. You can wet your feathers, or you can wet your fingers to wet this fur down so that it is more easily managed. You're just gonna work your thread all the way up right behind the eyes, create a nice little body right behind the eye. Then you'll just go ahead and pull your thread right in front of the eye of the hook in front of the bead chain, behind the eye of the hook in front of the bead chain. Trap that down. And cut the materials free. Or cut your loop free. And then go ahead and throw in a whip finish. And I, I like throwing in two whip finishes. It increases the durability of the fly just a little bit more. Even though we are going to hit the exposed thread wraps with some UV resin, I just like the added durability in there. Now we'll go ahead and cut our thread free. I'm going to grab a lighter and just singe away some of those hairs that are free. Try to pull, some, pull them away first, and now I'm going to hit them with the lighter. Just singe them away so that they aren't going crazy on me. And then grab some Raid Zap UV resin. Put that on the exposed thread wraps. And grab our UV light. Now go ahead and flip the hook over and preen our fibers back, get them out of the way of that UV resin. And hit it with the light. And there we go, we now have a completed, not only trout mini mover, these are a great fly for Impersonating small crayfish, bass and carp love them. Grab them in the shop, notonlytrout.com. Thank you much.